it's very rigid of you, Kavadi. You keep our hands by our side and the legs to all the work. So that's one of the first dances that you'll learn. Um, she did excellent dance. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how we start. We should start with kind of easy dances. We'd learn our one, two, threes, our side steps, which Siobhan did for us there. And then we kind of progress a little bit more into different tune types. So that was a reel. And then we'd also learn slip jigs. And um, some organisations will learn single jigs. There's a heavy jig, a light jig, a hornpipe, and then there's a whole range of other stuff that we have that you could learn. Um, so with competitive Irish dance, it's a little bit more rigid in the upper body. Hands are by your side, there's not much movement from the top. Where different dance forms, such as shadows or traditional step dancing, can be a little bit more freer and looser in the upper body. So I might demonstrate a traditional dance from North Kerry, which is not too far from where we are. Um, it's one of the dances that was choreographed by the last of the Irish dance masters called Jeremiah Bonilla. So I'm going to dance the Blackbird version of it as well. Give it a so little hope and enjoy. It's a little bit looser and a little bit wider than what Siobhan had done there. Just 
the block is here, and then you do your toe stands from okay. there. So it's not that safe for dancers, but we have it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Do but you I wear taps too? Sorry? Do you wear taps on your shoes? Yes, so um, it depends. So the Irish dance shoes, for traditional dancing, was just leather sole shoes. And you be one to the floor, and then kind of when competition was introduced, because they started to come into kind of big halls and big arenas, they kind of needed to bring sound to the shoes. So they used to have nails, and then later on, kind of became fiberglass. And then. Yeah, nice as that, but she has it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is the traditional Irish dance that you see today in what's worn in competition and worn in shows. So this is the block part uh -huh. where they do the toe stance. But then obviously there's not much support here for the front of the toes. It's very, very hot. So you do all your support and stand work just here on the blocks. Five, yeah, you five her laps. So if you can have different, you can have concord tips, which is like a wooden tip, and then five glass, which is the most popular. And then the heels, the heel is what would make the clicking sound. So when they jump up and click the heels, mm -hmm. that's where you get the sound. They're just clicking these two parts together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So from the historical perspective, what was the first known real Irish traditional dance? Like, was it a jig? Or like, I don't know. Okay. Um, to be honest, like there's way back. Way back, there's not really a record of it because like the tunes that we have, like I think the jig came from Italy and the reel came from England. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit of a borrowed tradition, like it didn't originate okay. in Ireland. Um, but as long as there has been music, there's always been yeah. dancing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, so it kind of just went. The men dance also? Men dance also, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the late dancing masters were all men. So they had no women teaching until kind of fairly recently enough. It was all men that were kind of the old dancing masters who used to travel around and teach it. Um, and then the introdu uh, introduction of uh, the AP, which kind of formalized competition and rock competition, and then kind of became more globalized when women started to teach properly and, yeah, earn their respect. <laughs> Any other questions for everyone? Well, the competitive dancing you're talking about, the competitive step dancing, like she was doing, that was for a demonstration, right? Yes! But now, is that, is that, is yeah. that an adult or bigger dance? Or is that no. Like, oh, before that? No, no, so um, competition emerged from the Gaelic League, and the Gaelic League was oh, yeah. right. set up in 1894, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of to promote Irish culture, so it was promoting GAA, the Irish language, Irish literature, and then Irish dance, and okay. then I think. The first competition was in 1905, um, but then that's where they kind of brought in rules and regulations and kind of put a structure on it because usually it was just for fun and it was... So the structure hasn't changed since 1905? Oh yeah, definitely. So like these new rules and regulations have come in, the costumes are different, everything. So costumes, they're kind of your show dresses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. just a Oh, they're the yeah. costumes. Yeah. Yeah. So in competition, you'd have your school's dress, so that your dancing school's dress, so that's their class costume. Um, and then kind of the more you go up, you'd get solo dresses, and that's where all the glitz and the glam and the yeah. waves and the diamonds all come in. Yeah. <laughs> so if you win a competition, what is that? I mean, is it like, like just a dollar value? You want, like, how does that work? Like, what do you get, like, prize? Or, yeah, so you know. when you win, so say, What's your bond dance? Your bond yeah. would be like the first kind of grade that you kind of do, you dance those dances, and then when you, move, when you win that dance, you move on to then the next grade. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of keep moving up and up and up until you get to championship level. So that's where you see the World Championships, where they get big loans. And yeah. it's, it's a huge, huge competition, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. It's a whole week long, and it's just pure Irish dance, and just, yeah, lots of vibes, <laughs> lots of music, lots of Kayleys, everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Is there a typical Irish a costume, folk dance costume? Um, there wouldn't be. Well, there is typical kind of old ones. So the older ones would kind of be a little simple like this. A lot of them would have had waistcoats and they would have had shawls on the back. Um, it kind of, it, it was all kind of with the introduction of competition that costumes started to come in where before that it was kind of just what everyone would wear when you just got up and down. So that was it really. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> You'll see though a lot of, if you look back at all the old pictures, 
they're literally just dresses with either a shawl or a wrap or they might have you know, a waistcoat over it or so, so they're very, very simple. Like, it's kind of more, it's only a modern thing that all the clips are now mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it just, it took off. 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 Yeah, and it just,
Yeah. 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 Yeah.